It's not a movie about slavery. It's a movie about freedom. It's a movie about family. It's a movie about love and the, 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 the power of faith combined with love being invincible. It's not um, the eat your broccoli version of this period. A Antoine has created what I think is a cinematic must see masterpiece. Ah, damn! Having gone to Auschwitz in preparation for the survivor, having touched the rails of where six million were brought to slaughter and worked to death, it was not hard to see the similarities. There was a trauma uh, expert on set speaking to people who ha were having really difficult times because look, we're, we're not shooting on a movie set. We're not, we're not in Hollywood, we're not in a green screen. Many of the sets we worked on are plantations where the bodies were burned and buried, where they're hung from trees. We're, we are, we're touching the trees, we're walking on the soil. It is in the air, it is in the earth. They're burning the coal, you're walking through gates of hell. That happened not so long ago. I think there's something about the location that makes you instantly transform and just meld into your roles. And immediately, because everything around you has such history and energy in it, and, and, and just tra it's very transportative, you know? It just takes you straight to that place. There's something really symbolic as well in those weeping willows that are, you know, ha have strains of flowers on them. And in a way, there's something about history that's a bit bent like those trees are, you know? and and, and you feel it, and, and my favorite note that Anton gave me was just stop and listen, because we're actually on a plantation, and beneath where you're standing is 400 years of pain. And if you listen, you can hear our ancestors, and they're with us in spirit. And that for me made this experience not an acting experience, it literally was a life-changing experience. As an actor, you, when you, you take on a character and there's always a moment when you get it and you never know where it's gonna come from. So you, you learn all your lines, you learn your dialect, you get your hair, you get your makeup, you, you, know, you rehearse with some of the other actors, you do all of those things, but you don't, um, there's, a, there's a magical moment when you understand a character that, that in a non-intellectual way. And it came for me a couple of weeks before shooting and we were testing the size of the, the neck and the arms and the shackles. And so we had all of the chains on, we had the neck thing on and they put it on, they're checking it and the, the key didn't work. And they were trying to get it, trying to get it. Oh, wait, and he was, oh, let me get the key. So. It was like stuck on my neck for probably 15 minutes and it just washed over me. People were running around looking for a key to get it off of my neck, but Peter was being beaten while he had it on his neck. And just in that moment, it was like, I got it. We would see all the ships out there, the whole mm -hmm. battle, boom, 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 boom. And he's taking it all in realizing 
and he realizes I gotta get gotta there. Get, he's gotta get there, but he's gotta get to the trees. The only way around, because that way you can't get to it. Mm -hmm. The trope of the Southern racist does not tell the story of America at large. Not all Southerners are racist. Not all Northerners uh, are, are for civil rights. Uh, but if we can ground this man in the Midwest, in the middle of the country, the plains, and we take all the sugar off this guy and just make him the most even I think there was a phrase, it was an essay that I had read, and it was, it was relentless matter-of-factness. And exploring those qualities of racism felt like it could be a contribution to the story and be able to speak about our country uh, and not just located in one particular place with one particular kind of awful white man. It could be your next door neighbor. And that's what I wanted to explore with Antoine, and Antoine said, go for it. Go find it. The historical ideas on January 1st, Lincoln um, signed the Emancipation Proclamation, but it was six months, you know, Juneteenth, before the uh, final enslaved people were liberated. Um, so we were depicting the uh, Louisiana Native Guard coming onto a plantation and f freeing the 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 people on, on the plantation. And Ant Antoine played Amazing Grace just to get everyone into the mood. Um, and a, a woman literally caught the Holy Ghost. And, you know, it was, you know, it was, it was certainly one of the most emotional moments I've ever experienced uh, making a movie. A lot of the people well, probably most of the people on the set were from the area. And then where we were shooting was uh, in the actual area where a lot of the, uh, the, the moments we were depicting in the story took place. So it was, it was supercharged and um, yeah, it was one, one of those moments I, I uh, will not soon forget. I thought I knew a lot about slavery. You know, obviously being a black man growing up in this country. But when you really get in it this deep, the idea of Peter running, trying to find his way. Imagine no lights, no food, on the run, being hunted. It's definitely changed me forever. We got 400 years of pain, of emotion. Each take, we should be bringing that to the table. I must get to my family five days 
from this one. family. Ah!